morning. Um, so the first remark is please do not forget to, to visit this wonderful park nearby. It's really worth it. Uh, I could have said that yesterday, but I was afraid then you would not uh, come on time to the lecture. Because no, it's, it's a non-trivial matter to go from here to the institute only through the park. You need a, a good guide like Watanabe, for example. Then you will be successful. Kevin is also good. Now I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. So next week, you can also ask me. So what are we dealing with? Let's remind us of our situation. We have a smooth projective curve over a field K. Or if necessary, we go to the algebraic closure of the field. And we have a locally free sheath. On C, and we have a cohomology class. For, mm, there's only the first cohomology. And this gives rise to a torsor. Mm, TC is the corresponding torsor, which is a fine linear bundle. No? So the fibers are fine spaces, but the transition maps are a a fine linear, not linear, as in the case of a vector bundle. Now, and the question we are dealing with is uh, whether this is when is this an, a fine scheme. Oh, and there are many criteria for being a fine, and, and sometimes one criteria is good, sometimes another. No, and we have seen that this can be answered by looking at the, oh, this question is, is uh, much more easier in case S is strongly semi-stable in characteristic zero, if it's semi-stable, because then it's basically a degree condition. And more generally, if we look at the strong harder Norseman filtration, we get a criterion for this property uh, along this, this filtration. No? No, so the picture you should have in mind is, ah, looks somehow like that. No addition, no, no, in general, no section. No, I mean, this class is trivial if and only if the torso has a section. Then it is isomorphic to the locally free sheath uh, itself. No? And uh, today, so now in that situation, basically we have answered it. Now this is answered, and now I have explained how this is related to tight closure directly of a normal two-dimensional standard graded ring, and we have also shown that in the case over a finite field, uh, being an affine scheme is equivalent of not containing any projective curve. No. And uh, no, today we look at deformations of this problem. So we have now, ah, let's say, some base, base scheme. And, uh, over, and now we have a relative curve over the base scheme. No, so, and in fact, it will be a one-dimensional base scheme. So we have, say, a generic point. We have here closed points. And now usually I would draw my curve here, my relative curve. But I also want to have space for the torso. So I draw my curves in the direction of the guest house. So that's the curve. No, so 
C over B is now a relative curve. No? Re smooth, relative, projective curve. No? So the main point is whenever you choose a point here, let's say P, then no, then ah, we have back kappa P, and the fiber is no, the fiber we will denote by C kappa P. No? That's then the version of the curve over this uh, field. No, no, for it's just to give a. No, we will have concrete examples later. Maybe I should draw it even a bit more like that. No, and now we have, instead of just having a locally free sheaf on, on one curve over a field, we now have a locally free sheaf on the whole thing. No, on, the, on this guy. We have a locally free sheaf, and again, we have a cohomology class, and therefore, we have everywhere a torsor. No, and uh, no, basically, it's the same picture. But now, well, it's a family. No, you just make a family of this picture. No, so it looks somehow like that. No, and here, yeah. No, maybe I use some. Color. Now here over this point we have this curve and we have this torso and over no that is uh, so in the one-dimensional case you have closed point and you have a generic point and maybe let's draw this generic curve a little bit thick and the torso also. Hmm? And now we are interested in the question, how does, no, so now you can um, decorate everything with the field. No, so we have the, cur the version of the curve over this field. We have the locally free sheaf over this curve. No, so we will have, say, S kappa P something. And we also have, ah, to be complete, no, the cohomology class induces, no, that's a bit too much, no? the, but the cohomology class is in, induces by pullback to the inclusion uh, cohomology class in the curve for the point, P is my point, in the locally free sheaf to that point. No, and this gives us a, a torso over C kappa P. No, and by because this, this construction of the torso is universal, this is the same as the torso of C restricted to the, to the fiber. No? So everything goes, suits well together. No? And the question is uh, how does Uh, the torso in the point P. So how does yeah how does the property property of the torso in the point being a fine or not a fine being a fine vary uh, in the family in the deformation? No, we have. A family of curves and a family of torsos, and we want to know how does this property behave when we vary the family. So, what is possible, what is not possible. Now, and both these, um, we will see two instances of this question which are directly related to tight closure questions. No? Okay. Now, if you Like to work more in the in the 
setting of commutative algebra, you could also, I mean, that you can, this question you can ask in general for, you no, know, you have any base scheme, you have any, no, even, I don't have to draw it. You have a base scheme, you have W, you can ask how does uh, uh, the property of um, WB, the fiber, no, no, B is, what was here? B is here now. No? The fiber over a point B, how does the affineness of WB vary in the family? No, that you can uh, ask uh, much more general. No, but may, may most phenomena which can occur at all, you can already see in the torsor case. Now, if you come from more from commutative algebra side, you can, for example, look at the following situation. You have a ring and a a D algebra and uh, you have an ideal in A no, and then you have the same situation. You have spec A above spec D. No, this ideal determines an open subset no, and if you have again here a or maybe I, I cannot decide whether I write the P or this thing. Maybe here uh, I write it like that. No? To this, to a prime ideal in the base, you again have the fiber is then given by, um, no? by the spectrum of this ring and you have the ideal in this ring, you know, the version of the ideal in this ring, and there you can also ask how does the property um, of this open subset being a fine vary. You know? And if you do, do not like any geometry at all, you forget that, and then you ask yourself how does, um, say, the local no, how do I have to say this? The no, I think. How does the local cohomology? Um, so this will be again uh, then denoted by uh, kappa p. How does the local cohomology uh, of this object depend on the point? No, what can you say? Well, when is it zero? When is it not zero? This is equivalent to being a, a fine. No, so that would be the. No, this is isomorphic to H one of d omega uh, R a kappa p structure sheaf. No. No, and then uh, because this is a quasi affine, you can affine this is that this guy is zero. And therefore, no, if you prefer local cohomology, you work with that side. No, but it's more natural to work in the geometric uh, setting. No? And so, why did I write here D? Well, it could be for domain. But in here, it's for Dedekind domain. So here, I think of a one-dimensional base, no, as I have drawn it here. So mm, and for D, we basically have two interesting situations, namely whether this D has a mixed characteristic or has um, uh, equal characteristic. And so D will be either, so of course everything can be made more general, but it's not really necessary. So D can be either the integers, you could also take any algebraic number ring instead. No? And then this is then basically the question how the affineness of the torsor varies if now, 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 now you can say this P is now a, a prime number. 
Uh, how does this vary with the prime number? Uh, and uh, so that's the first case. So that I, I talk about the arithmetic situation or arithmetic family or arithmetic deformation. No, and the second case is that you fix a field. So I will do it in a prime characteristic, and we just look at the polynomial ring in one variable. No, and that is the geometric deformation. Now here in the generic point will be the situation over the rationals, the special points, no, so the closed points. No, so here we say generic point. So this is a closed point or a special, yeah, special point. No, it's a specialization of what happens in the generic situation. Special point. Um, no, so in this case, rationals uh, is the generic case over a finite field with uh, Z mod P is the, is the special case. And here, the generic case, no, the generic case is here the field of rational functions. No, if you go to the quotient field, no, the generic point is just the quotient field. And uh, no, oh, this is the quotient field of this thing. And uh, no, the maximal ideals here, they are finite extensions of FP. So you have the same characteristic. No, so if you have a, a maximal ideal in the spectrum of D, then the residue field is a finite extension of SP and will have a certain degree. No, so all the algebraic closed points, they correspond to finite extension of this field. No, and the generic, the generic point has, the, or the generic field has a transcendental element in it. No, that's the big uh, difference here. No, and uh, now quite generally, um, you know that if the, if the generic fiber is affine, then almost all fibers are affine. Now, this is basically, now if you I mean, what does affine mean? It means that there exist global functions on this variety with which you can embed it as a closed uh, uh, embedding into an affine space. No, and there are only finitely many of those. So if you have found here finitely many functions which embed this, this uh, torsor, on the generic fiber, this generic torso, into an affine space. Of course, you have used some of the data here, but only finitely many. And so the fraction you use here, they will be defined uh, almost everywhere. And that gives then the embedding for almost all fibers, only finitely many exceptions. No, but that's the only general uh, statement you, you have here. So interesting case is, the generic fiber is not affine, oh, but maybe all other fibers are affine, or maybe infinitely other fibers are affine. No? So we are interested whether such a thing can happen. No, whether you can also say whether the lo local cohomolo uh, cohomological dimension, no, whether it varies how it, how it behaves. OK, so let's first deal with the arithmetic deformation, no? and um, we did not yet really have the definition of 
of tight closure in characteristic zero, no, but that's right, set for, for simplicity. Now, if we have a ring of finite type, now then we have this uh, infinitely many prime reductions of the situation. And uh, if we have F and I in A tensor Q, these data that gives you for each A P, which is no, A tensor Z mod P, uh, gives uh, the corresponding data here in, in this ring. No, and the tight closure in characteristic zero is defined by definition, uh, if um, FP belongs to the tight closure of IP in this ring for almost all P. No, and this is a nice theory with which you can everything you have produced in results you have produced in positive characteristic you can transfer uh, to characteristic zero, equal characteristic zero. That's the main idea. No, and the natural question is, well, if you have, say, if this holds for, if you only know this for infinitely many prime reductions, yeah, what then? Do you know then that uh, it's, uh, it's true for already almost all? No. And the example I will give will show that this is not the case. So really, uh, ah, I don't want to say, say everything can happen, but a lot can happen. No, and the example was uh, given by, so it's the example of uh, Motti Katzman and myself. So, no, our base is Z. Now we need a curve, so we need a, a relative two-dimensional ring, but no, it's, no, it's, it's then um, because of the base. No? The base also has a dimension. We have um, a three-dimensional ring, one equation, no? and the equation is, so we first work with the fifth power, but that didn't, well, we were not able to prove it. Um, so it's just the Fermat cubic. I think we wrote it with a negative sign, but that does not make a big difference. Now that's the ring. That's A. And uh, no, now we need an ideal. No, and remember, a fineness in the fiber has a lot to do with strong semi-stability. No, and uh, interesting behavior, so from this interpretation with strong semi-stability, you know where, where to look at for, for interesting uh, example, for which degrees, no? in which degree basically you can have uh, interesting uh, behavior. No? So you can also say the other way around. If you have a situation where you have a semi-stable, a semi-stable bundle in characteristic zero, and which is almost, um, say, for almost all points, strongly semi-stable, then you will have a uniform behavior of tight closure. Everywhere it will be then inside or not inside with finitely many exceptions. So, for example, you cannot have, uh, if you are over an elliptic curve, you cannot have uh, a weird behavior, which you can have in degree seven. So, I mean, the, the, the guess is that you can have that already in degree four, but it was worked out in degree seven. No, and uh, so the ideal is given by the fourth powers. So that's the ideal. And no, 4, 4, 4 gives 12, 12 divided by 2. We have to look for something of degree uh, 6. No, at least, uh, and we, yeah, like that. No? 
So that's the element. Now, and then we proved Yeah, what did we prove? So we proved um, that the behavior depends on the, no, the, the, the modulus of the prime number, modulo 7, and we proved it in two uh, cases. So oh, the continuation is here. So f belongs to the tight closure of this ideal for P having remained a 3 mod 7. No? And uh, F is not inside the tight closure for P being 2 mod 7. No? And uh, so here, that is what we proved in, uh, in the other uh, residue classes. We we have evidence how, how it behaves. And in three, here in that, that, that case, we even have it inside the, the Frobenius closure. No? And now you know by the theorem of Dirichlet that for, for both types, there are infinitely many prime numbers. No? So you have infinitely many prime numbers where it belongs to the tight closure and uh, infinitely prime numbers where it does not belong to the tight closure. No, and therefore, by the definition of uh, tight closure in characteristic zero, it does not belong to the tight closure in characteristic zero. No, and the interpretation here would be, no, now the base is spec set. We have not a fine in the, over the rationals. The torso is not a fine, but for infinitely many prime numbers, it is a fine, and for infinitely many prime numbers, it's not a fine. No. No, and it, so in the in the affine situation, you can embed it into an affine space, but but these embeddings do not. Uh, yeah, you cannot uh, globalize these embeddings. They have nothing to do with each other in, in for different primes. No. So that's the that's this examples which settled uh, this question, and so now we look at this geometric deformation. No, now, no, now the base is just an affine line. No? And so we have here an extra parameter, I call it T, where the curve depends on this extra parameter T. And uh, we also are interested in the same question. Well, and before I give the relevant example, that there is also strange behavior. Uh, let me mention how this is related to the localization problem. No, so lo localization problem, to remind you, so we have a ring. In positive characteristic, we have a multiplicatively closed set. No, and we have an element and an ideal. And then, no, we compare, maybe we don't need the element, no? We compare the, we look at the tight closure and then we localize at this system, or we go to the, we extend the ideal into this um, localization. It's not really a localization, no? it's not a local ring. And then we uh, look at the tight closure. No, and uh, 
So we always have this inclusion just by persistence of tight closure, no? and the localization problem is whether this equality holds. No? So what does that have to do with such families? That's very easy. Um, so that's the following uh, proposition. Yeah, I formulated for one dimension. Oh, it's a bit easier. So D, no, characteristic P, one dimensional domain, and we have R R is, uh, is, is a D algebra, and we have an ideal in R. No, and suppose that localization holds in general or in, in this setting. Eh? Suppose uh, localization property holds. Holds for R. Over all multiplicative. In fact, we only need it for one multiplicative system. Um, and let F be an element. No, and uh, suppose that. Um, F belongs to the tight closure in R tensored with the quotient field of, of D. No, so this is just the multiplicative system is just D without zero. That's the multiplicative system. And uh, no, then the statement is then F belongs to the tight closure of I in R over no, R kappa P uh, for almost all, all P in spec D. No, and that is quite direct and easy to prove. No, I mean starting from there, uh, you, you go back to R, you have some factor H times F, so the tight closure even holds in R itself. And then by persistence, it's, it holds almost everywhere, where, where H becomes a unit. No? Now, so if localization, no, let's, let's trans translate it in this situation, so we have tight closure inclusion generically. That would mean here that uh, the generic torso is not affine. Then that statement would say then almost everywhere the torso is not affine. No, it's the opposite here. If it's affine, it will be almost affine everywhere. But now localization would imply Generic fiber, not a fine, almost everywhere, not a fine. No, and we will give an example uh, showing that uh, this is not uh, true. In fact, in the example shows non affine generically, but a fine everywhere. Okay, so. Yeah, and the, so now we need a curve. And that is a little bit more complicated and built on work of Monsky in the context of Hilbert Kunz multiplicity. So the equation is, and I should say it's in, uh, so now we work in characteristic two. And 
So our ring has now become S. So that's, now we need a F2T algebra. So T is inside. That's the parameter with which we deform. And uh, now we have three variables. Now it looks exactly the same. But now uh, we have, uh, again, one equation. And now G is Z4 plus Z square XY plus Z times X3 plus Y3. So it's, it's homogeneous of degree 4. So T has uh, degree 1, 1, 1. T has degree 0. Uh, and uh, da, 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 plus t plus t squared. Now that is the place where the parameter occurs, x squared, y squared. Now, and Monsky came to this equation in studying Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity and Hilbert Kuhn's function. Now, and the result of Monsky was, that's I think from 98, no, now you can, you plug in for t. Well, either, either you consider t as a transcendental element and you consider it over the field of rational function, or you plug in for t. No? So either t is the t in the function field, or t goes to, a, I think, we call this alpha, to a generator in FQ, a generator. And then the degree of alpha is given by the degree of the field extension FQ over F, uh, F2. And in, in both situations, now we are over, over uh, we have a two-dimensional standard graded normal ring over a field of positive characteristic. No, and uh, Monsky showed that uh, the hilbert kunz multiplicity of no, the depends on the field, and it is either, well, it is free for T transcendental, so in this case, and in the other situation, it depends on the degree of alpha. No, so here it's uh, 3 plus, oh, for 3 plus 1 over 4, D, in that case. No, and, and D is the degree of alpha. No, alpha is an algebraic element over F2, so it has a degree. No, and so only in one case we have three. In all the other uh, cases we have uh, a bigger hilbert kunz multiplicity. No, and that was, Monsky did it by quite explicit, quite complicated uh, computations. So that does mean, so if we now look at the corresponding family, you know, so now, now we take the broch of S, the broch of S will be the relative family, the base is A1 over F2, you know, and then in terms of uh, semi-stability, in terms of semi-stability, you know, we had a formula uh, relating Hilbert Kunz multiplicity with uh, the slopes in the, the, the strong slopes uh, of the CCG bundle. And if you translate that back, that means that uh, so on C being the approach of S, which is the relative curve, then we have on C. Yeah, in the transcendental case, uh, the CCGs X, Y, Z uh, is uh, strongly semi-stable. Uh, 
but uh, in C, in an algebraic point, it's never strongly semi-stable. And in fact, the D uh, tells you which Frobenius pullback you have to go back to destabilize. No? So if you, because in particular, you have strong semi-stable in, uh, in the generic fiber, you will have semi-stable almost everywhere. Only finitely many exceptions. So the, the first Frobenius only destroys semi-stability for finitely many points. But the second Frobenius de destroys um, semi-stability in more points. And in the inter in intersection, you only get the, the generic point remains, nothing else. No? OK. So that's the, that's the curve together with the Hilbert Kunz and the, the semi stability criterion. And these properties you need in order to uh, build now a, a counter example to the localization problem in that form. No, so now we, we have to say what the ideal is. No, I mean, no, I just said that these uh, CCGs are of the, of the maximal ideal, have this semi-stability behavior which we need to have in order to find a counterexample. But of course, X, Y, Z you cannot use directly because that's the maximal ideal and that's tightly closed. But we, we just take the second Frobenius pullback of it, which is this guy. Now we are in characteristic two. So second Frobenius pullback is just raising to the fourth power. And uh, here we take, no, so now the equation is not symmetric. So we take F is, so uh, now this has the same behavior like, like uh, the original CCG thing. Uh, so the ideal is the fourth powers and our element, again, we need something of degree three and because it's not symmetric here, we need Y3, Z3. No? Okay. No, and now, Yeah, basically we have, uh, again, uh, well, I mean the proof is a mixture of, of concrete computations and uh, yeah, a more conceptual approach and mixing this somehow together. Right? But at the end you have to do some hard work to show here anything. No, I mean think of that you have really a degree extension with a certain alpha and you want to have to say something about it, what, whether something belongs to an ideal or not. No? Um, no. So the lemma, the main work lies in this lemma. Um, so FQ is F2 generated by alpha, the degree of alpha is D and capital Q is two to the power D minus one. Now then we show that X, Y times F, Q does not belong to the uh, Qth bracket power of the ideal. No, that's the explicit uh, computation we have have to done. No? And uh, the good thing was Monsky could remember the computation and the theory he had to develop here to make this computation and uh, after a while he could remember what he did and so he was able to, to show this. No? Um, Okay, and now we have to, no, the, the, the theorem is that, uh, so localization does not hold. No, and the only thing is, uh, um, no. 
you remember tight closure, you have uh, a non-zero element times f to the power q must always belong to i to the power bracket q. So, but of course, now here we have shown this only for one candidate. No, but there's the theory of test elements, and uh, so what's remaining is that x, y is a test element, which it was in that case not trivial. No? Test elements in concrete rings, concrete characteristic, no, small characteristic. So it's, it's quite easy that, that x, y will be a test element in a, if you make the characteristic bigger, but that's not allowed here. So you really have to work in this characteristic. No. So this is a test element. Therefore, this guy shows that f in the algebraic case, f does not belong to the tight closure in the fq version of our ring. No. But, no, but, because of the, for, but that can also be done directly because of the Hilbert Kunz multiplicity is three. We know that, the, that in the transcendental case, we have a strongly semi stable bundle, and therefore, by the degree formula I, I showed you two days ago, uh, we know that uh, F belongs to the tight closure in S F2 in the transcendental case. No. And uh, no, so here you have a really strong behavior, not a fine generically, a fine everywhere. No. In the tight closure generically, not in a tight closure nowhere. No, and the corollary is that um, so tight closure is not plus closure for two-dimensional normal standard graded rings. No. And if you were paying attention yesterday, I, I proved more or less the same thing. But I had the extra condition over a finite field. No. Over a finite field, it is the same, but if you drop the condition over a finite field, so finite, I mean algebraic closure of a finite field, uh, this is not true anymore. No, and the example is just uh, you look at the, at the generic situation. This thing, no, we know here it's in the tight closure, so we have to show somehow that it's not in the plus closure, but that it's, it's easy. No? If we would have here in the generic fiber uh, a curve, then this curve would extend almost everywhere. And then it would be in the plus closure almost everywhere and in the tight closure almost everywhere. No? So that cannot not be. No? So here we have that cannot exist. And um, so. Do I have something more to say? Ah, maybe one. So in other characteristics, what are, what should you look at in other characteristics? So the equation to look at, so if P is at least three, the equation to look at is uh, something like that. Oh, this thing. No, now we need a parameter, x plus t, y which is also a curve which has been studied by, by Monsky in, and, uh, in characteristic three. But I'm quite sure that, uh, so, no, so here you have the parameter again. Um, and uh, that here you will have a similar behavior. So my general impression is that, that localization fails is rather a generic Phenomenon. No, I mean, in each case, it might be difficult to write it down, but if you really have that, that localization holds you are in a very special situation. As soon as the data become sufficiently generic, uh, there's no reason to believe in localization at all. 
OK. Well, I think that was it. So thank you very much, and enjoy the school.